Hey YouTube, I've been threatening to do this for a while. I could probably practice that, that, that intro a little bit more. So, this is the Washburn Wings, um, one of my favourite guitars. You may be able to tell, see this, I've got quite a lot of them. Uh, this is kind of like a, everything I know about it, trying to um, give information as much as I've got. I, I run a, a Facebook page called Washburn Guitars of the Golden Era, which is for the sort of 80s, late 70s. 80s washburns, which are these, because I just fell in love with them. Um, someone actually asked me before, so how come you like those guitars so much? So I'll kind of talk a wee bit about that. So washburn, going right from the start, and in this video, I'm probably not, that's probably all the guitar I'm going to play. I'm, um, I will do videos of each one, I think, probably. I don't know, I don't really have a plan, see if it's popular or not. Um, so washburn were a guitar company in like 1890s, something like that. In America, they used to make wash, um, acoustic guitars and banjos and mandolins, such things. Uh, and they were they weren't as, they weren't competitors to like your Martins and Gibsons and stuff like that. They were sort of cheaper versions of such things. Um, and during the war, being Second World War, I'd imagine, uh, they changed over from making guitars to making army stuff, you know, guns and stuff um, for the for the war effort. And they never came back. So that was the end of Washburn. Um, I'm sure there's more history to it than that. And then, roll on a bit, you get to the late 70s, when the name, I don't think it's the same company, the name was bought by somebody else and they were going to make guitars, electric guitars. So this is the first Washburn electric guitar. And these came out, I think, in 1978, the very early ones. Um, and it's kind of what was going on in the world at the time. I think it's... This is after the Ibanez Artist, I think. Um, so basically what you've got is a sort of double cut Les Paul type thing. Um, but what the, the whoever the owners of Washburn were at the time went to Japan and they went to a, a factory called Yamaki, who up until that point had only made guitars for the Japanese market. They made a lot of acoustics and stuff like that. And then they started making these. Uh, originally, I think, to be honest, that the for the first couple of years there was only two guitars there was this one which is the hawk and then that one which is the falcon uh for like 78 78 stuff like that right around about the end time um and they had a bit of a different philosophy they were trying to make for my the, i think this factory was like it's a, a small factory like 30 people in it type thing so they're kind of handmade um i assume they had writing jigs, I don't know. They're hand carved apparently, the tops hand sanded or whatever it is to make it curved. So I'm just going to base it all on this being the first one. Uh, so this is our 789, this one. Um, so what they were trying to do was make the best guitar in the world. Pretty much. Like spec wise. So I mean, that's this is the, well, there the were only two in the range. This is the lowest, the, the cheaper one. So you've got a lot of this information, there's a, a site which I should have put up on the computer, but I didn't, called, uh, if you look up Wings, I think it's G3 Wings or something like that. It's a, someone's done a similar sort of thing to what I'm doing, apart from they did it 10, 20 years ago. So they've got a lot They've got a lot of information, quite a lot of pictures. Not all the information's right, but most of it is, but they've got pictures of most of the guitars. Um, unfortunately, the site, I think the la it was last updated in 2006 or something like that, but I mean, that doesn't really matter because we're all from the 80s anyway. But... Um, so more information keeps sneaking out about these things. One of the people that come from information is I know uh, a guy in Denmark and some a, a couple of guys over there um, who are mad into the Yamaki factory. They made a band called Dayon, which I'll go on to. But basically last year, the year before, they went on a, an outing to Copenhagen and they invited the guy who designed these to it. So there was he was getting to see all his guitars that he'd made and designed, you know, forty years later, sort of thing. Uh, not a really cool Japanese guy, obviously. Um, 
so there's more information has come from that so that's up to date um one of the problems with the internet is an awful lot of things get somebody says something and then it gets repeated and then it gets repeated again and it's copied and pasted and then it becomes fact when it was originally someone just going i think it might be and then goes on blah 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 one of those things is matsumoku who are one of the probably the biggest guitar manufacturer in japan at that era you'll see that if you ever look up um we we'll to get the angle right you can see the wood screen in this uh you'll see that if you look up guitars uh, japanese guitars on ebay so many say they're matsumoku and they're not it's just become one of these buzzwords it's like oh it's japanese must be matsumoku blah 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 um apparently according to the guy who designed and built these they never made uh, Matsumoku never made a washboard. So, going from that guy, he's probably right. Um, so, what you've got is a very expensive guitar, or it would be now. Um, that I, I, I hate to think how much this would cost because I mean, you can spec this up against, you know, spec up against a Gibson Les Paul, and it absolutely wipes the floor with in every category. Um, so you don't really get guitars like this anymore. So this one being the basic one, you've got an ash top. A ridiculously, one of the things about Japan is um, Japan doesn't have trees as such, so they were buying all the, the best wood in the world from like Canada and places like that. Um, so this is all pure premium stuff. You know, it's like it's a PRS level type. I would have thought maybe even better. Um, so that this is the plain brown top one. I mean, look at the, the the type of wood it's made of. It's just it's, it's stunning to look at. This just like you know, this is not a this is just ash. It's not, it's not a particularly fancy type of wood. So what you've got is, you've got a, basically a double cut Les Paul, but it's through neck, which they weren't, it wasn't invented then, because I know BC Rich used to do through necks. I think they kind of claimed to invent it, even though I'm pretty sure a Gibson Firebird's through neck. But anyway, so it's through neck, three piece. You've got like a, I, pr I should probably know what kind of wood it's made out of, but I don't know. Um, I'd imagine it's maple. I don't know. Maple with a, Rosewood stripe or something like that. Yeah. Through strung, wooden truss rod covers, you know, pure luxury stuff, like wooden uh, back plates. But even, even look at the back of it. The back of this guitar looks better than most. You see your your um, 4A graded maple top guitars and stuff like that. Look at that, that's just better. That's just wood. That's not, not a veneer or anything like that. That's just solid, pure fanciness. So it's through strung, like a Telecaster is. The bridge is called a power sustain bridge. <laughs> it's like they were, they were starting to get good at naming things then so this is like a solid block and um, you've got brass saddles and clamps on either side like a wee allen grub, grub screw goes on either side so once you've set your intonation and your string height you clamp them together and it makes it a big solid mass and it goes through strung so it's like you know it's like as sustainy as you can get the pickups we have recently found out uh, from this chap in who went to denmark they are Ibanez Super 70s, basically. Um, you see, they've got three, two, two adjusting screws and one on this side. I think they're made by Goto. I think most of the hardware is Goto, actually. Um, so they're basically copies of Ibanez Super 70s. I did a video a couple of weeks ago of my pals, Falcon here, which actually has a DiMaggio Super Distortion in the bridge position. And <sighs> sounds the same. So basically, they're, they're Goto made, but they're basically DiMaggio Super Distortions. Um, that guitar, when you flip between, it's still got the original neck pickup, so when you flip between the two, it sounds the same as this kind of thing. Um, you know, it's like the, the, this, the, the neck pickup's a little bit bassier and this one's a little bit trebly because of where they are. Um, it sounds exactly the same in that. So I would pretty much, I don't know if you could tell the difference without measuring them or looking in the back of them to uh, what they are. Um, yeah, so two volumes, two tones, Les Paul layout. These aren't the original knobs. I, I like the, the ones with the wee notches on them. They should just be smooth, but I don't know there's any notches on them. Um, it's got its own branded tuners. Uh, this is a 25 inch scale, which um, is a Fender's 25 and a half inch and a Gibson's 24 and three quarters. So it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah, PRS do that. Yeah. Um, so there we go. And we've got a bound neck, rosewood fingerboard, um, wooden truss rod cover. Again, just luxury appointments, which are rather cool. So that's kind of, this is the Hawk. So at the start, there was the Hawk and the Falcon. Um, oh, where was I going with that? Don't know. So if you look up the 
Wings G3 page, which if you type in Washburn Wings, you'll probably find it. Um, they they categorise them into model A, B, and C, which the guy says on on the site. You know, he's made up those designations, but there is sort of variations in it depending on what year it is. So for the first couple of years, like seventy, maybe even seventy seven, seventy eight, this is a book that would be classed as a B model. Um, the earlier one has the output jack on the top rather than on the edge. Um, Apart from that, there's not really much difference. I have seen one that's got slightly different attack uh, in here. Say this, this goes in on a straight line. There's one that kind of curves up a little bit and it's got a slightly different shape here, but it might be a sort of prototype or a very early one. Um, but most of them look like this. So that this was a 79. Um, yeah, so this is the Hawk. So if, I go, if we go up the range, I don't, really want, I don't really want to pick them all up. I could just keep this going. Yeah, so this is only meant to be an overview of it. So Yamaki with this wee tiny factory, 30 people, they imported all their stuff, um, imported all the wood, Gotoh made the hardware, and then they were sold here. They were quite popular. Um, so, so basically the Falcon's the same guitar, again, apart from this time, instead of having a three-piece neck, it's got a five-piece neck. I think this is one of the prettiest guitars ever made. Um, it's got a rosewood top, it's got an ebony fingerboard, it's got brass rings as fret markers, which are rather nice. Uh, I forgot to mention, they've, they've all got brass nuts as well, it's a brass nut. And it's got the same power sustain thing, the uh, har harmonic, no sorry, I said power sustain bridge, it's a harmonic lock bridge and power sustain pickups. Um, the Hawk, the Falcon, so the difference between the Falcon is it's got binding on the headstock, it's just a little bit fancier. It's got the five piece neck, it's got an ebony fingerboard, it's got push pull pots for coil splitting. The two pickups, this switch shouldn't be there, it was on this guitar, so I just left it. Um, and again, through neck. One of the things I like about this one is the fact that the through neck you can see from space or from the back of the venue. You know what I mean? If you look at it from the distance, it looks pretty, pretty fancy. Um, whereas a lot of the other ones, it's sort of hidden on this one. It's like, so. Maybe something to do with the fact that it's a rosewood top, actually. So it's not been painted, it's just been lacquered. Whereas this one, you can see the... It's obviously been stained afterwards. You know, kind of they've kind of meld into each other. See it a bit more in the neck there. It's not quite as obvious that that's a neck through. So they, they made the 1978, 79, they were making Hawks and Falcons. Doing great. So they expanded the range a little bit. Um, these things were quite popular. If you look... Uh, on my Washburn Golden Era page, you see a lot of famous people playing them. Um, Manny from Nazareth, John Fogarty had one in the 80s, um, Andy Summers from The Police, uh, Mick Moody from Whitesnake, um, many more, many more. Um, they were popular. Um, so they decided to expand the range a little bit, so they brought in cheaper models, this being the Raven. And this one's a 1980, I think, 81. So I think these came out in about 1980. Um, it's basically a similar shape. And it's it's a bolt on, though. It's a six bolt. So it's got bolts on the back, but it's also, if you take the pick out of it, there's another two bolts in below there. So it's like a six bolt neck. Um, and basically a, a basic version. These were not made by Yamaki. I think they were finished by Yamaki, though, according to this guy who used to who used to work there, or whose dad, I think it was, was it his uncle? I think his uncle owned the company and he um, start work, started working for him when he started building the electric guitars. So the Raven is a cheaper model. Uh, according to the guy, it's not made out of the premium woods. It's just made out, I think, I think the word he used was crap. So it's just like what we would now class as being a decent, um, a decent type of wood. When you're talking about premium stuff, it's cheap. So I think they, they were built off they were built by somebody else and then given to you, you know, the, like roughly, and then the hardware and stuff was put on and were finished by Yamaki. So you've got the Raven being the smaller, the cheapest electric guitar at the time. And they also brought out the Scavenger bass, which is basically a bass version of the the Raven. Uh, a very, very heavy bass. These are the, the easiest, one of the easier bass, the easiest bass to find anyway. Um, stunning, again, boat on neck. Fant oh. Fantastically heavy and fantastically fantastic guitars then. So we're now at that time, right. This is my new one. This is why I've waited a while to do 
the new um, to do the full range. This is the Vulture base, which is basically a base version of this. Um, this is this, the Tobacco Sunburst one. I think it was available in this colour. Oh, the, the Hawk was available in this colour as well. So I got this one, I don't know, a month ago, something like that, um, and it had been painted red. And I didn't know it. I thought it was a red one. But, uh, I'll do I'll do a video on that as well. So you get like a through neck um, Hawk base called a Vulture. And at the top of the range, they decided they were going to make an even fancier one than the Falcon, which... Going by any standards, that Falcon is a pretty damn fancy guitar. Until you start going, how can we make it even sillier? And then you end up with the Eagle. And this is a Nancy Wilson from Heart, apparently. Um, she, she played them, I don't know if it's a, a signature model or not. So now with the Eagle, you've got ridiculously overdone abalone binding around the outside. Metal knobs, still got push pulls. Um, now you've got wing fret markers and more, more ridiculous binding around the top of the headstock. Um, it's a very, very pretty guitar. Um, this is available in black as well. So these came out in 1980, the end of 1980, I think. This one's an 81. Um, my Falcon's 80, by the way. Uh, so that's kind of the, the run of the best, the best they ever did. In 1982, there was a bit of a change because they couldn't keep up with the orders. I think these were too expensive. Um, they weren't expensive to buy, but they're obviously very expensive and time consuming to build when you actually just look at the the quality of them. So what uh, Washburn asked Jamaica to do was to spec them down a bit so they could produce more at a cheaper price. And you end up with the Falcon. This, is, this isn't mine, this is borrowed. This is just to get as many Falcons in one shot as possible. There we go, so there are many wings. So how many have we got here? If I stand here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wings in one shot. Um, so these were down specced a bit. They're no longer through neck. It's now a set neck. Um, it's also no longer flat carved top. It's flat top. And that's, that's kind of really it, really. So, so it's, a, it's a cheaper version. And obviously you don't know what kind of wood this is made of um, because you can't see it through the, the finish. That was one of the reasons I wasn't, I wasn't so keen on the, the Eagle because it's... It's, oh, it's the same as the Falcon, so it's got the five-piece neck through and stuff, but you don't notice that. You have to kind of tell people that it's five-piece neck through. So when they down they down it in 1982 to this one, this one is a Falcon. There's also a Hawk, which I've got on the wall up there, which I can't avoid reaching down. That's a 1984 Hawk, but it kind of comes in at the same range as that. I'm not as, as sure about from now on type thing, but uh, an 82... The Raven was gone out of the range and they replaced it with one called a T-Bird, um, which is sort of like a Raven. The main difference being, they're normally blue for some reason, but the main difference being the, the controls, instead of having four like this, you've got three in a line. So it must be a volume and two tones, or two volumes and a tone, and a pickup switch. Uh, some, sometimes the pickup switch is here as well, rather than being here. So I think the T-Bird's got the three tones here, the three knobs here, and then the pickup selector's here somewhere. So that's like the 1982 when they started doing that. Um, I've also just found another wing. So I'm, I'm saying I've got the whole set. So if you want to know, it's like Scavenger, Vulture has the two bases. Raven, Hawk, Falcon, Eagle. And then that's a, a, a that's a 1984 one. So it's after this 1982 change. So that's kind of the full wing range in 1980, 1981 I've got. And then this T-Bird thing came out, um, which I wasn't really that keen on, really not that interested in getting one because I've already got the Raven and it kind of looks the same as the Raven. So it's like, you know, it's like, um, I'll probably get one eventually. But I've also just found out just the other day that there's a T-Bird Deluxe, which I now want because it came, you could get it with a maple neck. So it was like, a, I think it was, I don't even, I'm not even sure if it's bolt on or not. But there's, there's, there's another one, there's a T-Bird Deluxe, which has got like a, it's like a veneer top. You know, so it's the flat top one, but it's got like a veneer and it's got a, it's got a maple fingerboard and a quite fancy one of them. So what happened in 1982 or 1983, maybe actually sort of around about the early 1983, they were making these guitars and they were no longer using the premium woods for, you know, the, the post 82 ones. They were still what we would class as premium woods, but not premium, premium woods. Um, and they sent them, they sent a, a shipload or a container load to America. Yamaki did and something went wrong and all the necks warped because they'd 
maybe not researched into how to build it without the because you're, you're not going to warp a three piece neck like this. I mean, there was a, a lot of that as well um, in ja in America. A lot of Japanese guitars were just thought of as being absolute trash because they're going on a ship, you know, going down past the South Pole. So they're whatever temperature Japan is, then it's pure sub zero and then up. So it's pretty tough for guitars. So they had to build them pure rock solid for them to actually make it to America. Um, but that this container load was basically toast when it got to America and Yamaki couldn't afford it. That was it. Bang, gone. Uh, so no more Yamaki. And then they got taken over, or they didn't get taken over. Washburn went to Chushin, which is another Matsumoku type factory where they started making another range. Um, that's for the 84 one comes from it's pretty much the same as that so there is theories kicking about that maybe the yamaki still had some stuff left that they hadn't you know uncompleted guitars you know just like a body and a neck blank type thing and then they sort of kept tushin had all these and then they put their own hardware on it and stuff so that's where you where you get the the 84 or the late the later 83 ones um yeah so that's kind of the wings there is another one in there which is a it came out in 1980 because I've got a magazine that's got a thing. If you go to the Washburn Golden Era page, you'll you'll find this. Uh, there's an advert and it's got the it's called an SB40, so it is a wing series, so it's kind of like the Vulture base, apart from it's more the shape of it's more this shape. This is a Washburn Force from a bit later, so it's it's basically this shape, but it's a a Vulture, uh, so it's neck through and stuff. This one's a bolt on. Um, it's called an SB40 known as the, the not wing shaped wing um, there is that and also in that very advert and on that wings page there's something mentioned about a, a condor which nobody knows what it is it's basically only ever seen in that one um, that one article that one page it says apparently there's a condor we don't know anything about it or what it is on the advert that I found which is on the Golden Era page in a guitar magazine from 1980 October 1980 there's a picture of another bass, which is kind of like the Vulture bass, apart from it's got like a different shaped horn here. And we think that might be the elusive condor. But never, it's the only picture I've ever seen. It's like, a, it's only that size. Um, so there might possibly somewhere be a condor. There, probably, there, might, there must be one because they took a photo of it, but there might not be any more. Um, quite rare. Wingy wise, uh, so up to about 1984, 1985, they were making these quite commonly um, made as BBR. So it's like you know, black with a red binding on it. I've got there's an explorer sitting behind me there, which has got that on it. It's not a washburn though. It was, it was a big thing. So 1984, 1985 was still all, all black, all black hardware and red binding. And then, so that's basically the, the what I would class as the golden era ones. And then, so Japan kind of stopped making guitars because there was something to do with a stock market crash and um, labour laws and exchange rate mechanisms and stuff. So things started getting cheaper, uh, started getting more expensive in Japan. And people were going, I'm not paying, you know, I was paying $200 for a Japanese guitar last year. I'm not paying 400 for one this year. So they just stopped doing it. And kind of there ends the golden era a little bit. Um, Yamaki, which I should probably have talked about, after they started the Washburns, they did their own brand of guitars. You do actually get Yamaki branded guitars. I don't think they were ever really... I think they were from the Japanese market only. You get like... Um, what do you call it? Like Strat copies and Les Paul copies, but they're pretty rare and far between. Um, and a lot of acoustics. I've not really touched on acoustics. I'm not really that into acoustics. So this in this era, they were trying to make a guitar that was better than a Les Paul, and they succeeded. I'm sorry, they're, they're not worth as much as Les Pauls are, but they are better guitars. Um, and then they started, you know, when they started that 1982 thing, was that oh, we could make them cheaper? They didn't make them, they didn't sell them any cheaper. They were the same price, but they're suddenly sitting there. You know, you get the bean counters in, and they're like, "Yeah, well, why are we selling a guitar for 300 quid that costs 250 quid to make when we can build it for 150 and still sell it for 300?" This is kind of like the Fender thing with the pre, you know, the CBS when CBS took over, they started going, "All oh, right, well." Yeah, okay, we're getting five hundred dollars for a, a strap. Why don't we just make it a couple of pounds cheaper? And they started, you know, just cutting corners here and there. You know, putting a three bolt neck plate on it. So because obviously it's cheaper to buy three bolts than it is to buy four stuff like that. Just like yeah, and then obviously they downgraded into the wood. And then 
So they kind of lost their way a little bit by the time they got to 82, 83, 84. They're, these are by no means as high end as the earlier ones. You know, they're still awesome guitars. Or that's why I've got them. Um, but they're, they're more comparable with a Gibson or something like that, but these are not. Um, it got much worse after that, after they stopped getting the Japanese when they started going to Korea and then when the Super Strats came in and stuff and basically Washburn just threw their name away a bit and so did a lot of companies because they started realising that, hold on, if we put out a guitar, a cheap guitar, we can still charge the same amount of money because people are just buying them. You know, pe people don't know. Um, so you end up with sort of the late 80s, early 90s, you ended up with guitars that were branded Washburn made in Korea and they're cheap nonsense compared to this sort of thing. It's basically not the same company in any way. Um, and so I was talking about Dayon there, or I was talking about Yamaki. They had their own brand called Dayon, which are even fancier than the Washburns. You don't get very many in the UK. Um, they, I think they had a, a distributor in Canada and in Australia, so you occasionally see them there. They're not as pretty, but they're a bit fancier. They've got one that's very similar to the wing, apart from the top horns, a little bit pointier, and the pickup switch is here, but apart from that, you look at it and it looks the same. It looks really odd to me, because I'm used to this having it uh, symmetrical. Um, but Dayon are pretty good. They've got, what, like a, a an, an Eagle Plus. So instead of having, I would say, this has got the three-piece neck through, that's got the five-piece. Well, the Dayon do one that's a seven-piece, and they do one that's a green, like it's basically this kind of wood, apart from it's green stained, and they look stunning, apart from they look a wee bit odd here. It's called a Mark X, I think. Um, don't I, you don't really get them in the UK, so I've not I've not bought one. Basically, it'll be on the list at some point, I think, if I ever see one cheap. But even when you do see them, they're thousands of pounds, which these should be. Just now, they're not not yet. They have jumped up in price a lot in the last few years though. Um, when I first put a video of my of the Falcon up, I think there was only, you know, maybe two or three hits, two videos that had them on YouTube at all. So I'm taking some of the credit for pushing the price up in these things. Um, you've really got to play one. I mean, I, I, I used to use the Falcon for showing off to folk a lot. You know, when someone's going, oh, it's like, oh, you've got lots of guitars. I've got a nice Paul, I've got one of these though. And it's like, there's no, in my eyes, there's no comparison. Okay, I do get it. Jimmy Page and Peter Green didn't have a Gibson Les Paul. I didn't have one of these because these didn't exist. But if you go to the 80s, you see these popping up. Um, I'm not sure how much of that's with choice. You know, it's like I think Washburn were quite good at giving them free to people. You know, uh, they're saying there about Andy Summers playing one in the police. And it's like, I only played it that one top of the pop screen. So I wonder if he was given it sort of thing. I don't, not, not so much a sponsorship deal as in here's a guitar. Yeah, um, so I think that, that's been half an hour on just a, a very basic intro on the Washburn Wings. I suppose to talk about reissues, they did get reissued a few times. Um, there are ones that are somewhere between 1988 and the 90s that are, well, that's only one year. So there's, there's, there's early 90s ones somewhere that are kind of sort of copies of this one, you know, with the through neck and stuff. But they're quite rare. I don't. I've not really seen many of them. They've got like. I don't know if they're even called eagles and hawks and stuff. I think they're called SB, SB something, SB fifty or whatever. Um, so they are quite interesting. I I can spot them a mile away because they're not the standard colours and they've got different hardware. Um, they might even maybe have a tunematic bridge. There's also a reissue run, and I would say probably the mid nineties. Well, they're made by Samick, who made Epiphones at the time. So you've got like basically an Epiphone Les Paul from the mid nineties, but it's this shape, um, and it's branded Washburn. I have had a shot of one of them, and it's basically a nineties Epiphone Les Paul. So I mean, they're they're well regarded in Epiphone circles. Um, it's basically one of them, but from this shape, uh, there's also a hammer. It's quite a similar shape to this as well, actually. So they're they're actually pretty good. They're not this legal. They are, they're, they're, they're just they're, they're just the best Epiphones as opposed to being better than a Gibson or same as a Gibson. Um, and then there's a couple of reissues. Like there's a it's a 2012 when it was some anniversary, 125 years or something like that. They did like an Eagle, which is that one in black. Um, and there's a couple of wee 
bits and bobs kicking about. But basically, that's it. That's the worst burn wings. And the reason to answer the question I was originally starting with, how come you love worst burn so much? It's because of the best guitars I've ever seen. Um, I hate to think how much this would cost new to buy it. I mean, it doesn't have the, the desirable name. I mean, worst burn's relative. relative I mean, they're still going. They do like Nuno Betancourt's guitar and stuff like that. They're just, they're not a high-end guitar. By the time it came into the sort of early 90s, they, they you know, were making guitars at 100 quid, the really cheap ones. And they, I think they always made expensive ones. Um, but obviously, if you're selling guitars in a shop, I'm sure you sell 10 at 100 pounds for every one you sell at 500 quid. So I think, are, you know, the, the lower end ones, I mean, I'm sure if you go to Guitar Guitar or something like that, you know, their, their highest selling guitars are going to be you know, Epiphones and Squires, they're not going to be Gibsons and Fenders. So they kinda they they kinda washed themselves out a little bit. I'm saying that I have but I played one my pal had it, an MG forty washboard something like that. It was it was really good. It's like super strats. I am not really that keen on the super strat things. For me, style and fashion wise, I like the coffee table era, which is sort of late seventies, early eighties when, you know, you get this kind of wood and there's all the brass and stuff like that. It's really fancy. It looks like a coffee table, and then when it started getting to sort of 84, 83, 84, they started going for, well, that's, you know, you get the sort of EMG looking pickups, black hardware, and not necessarily in washburns, but on all, all guitars, so you started getting neon finishes, and, you know, they, they started looking a bit more 80s, and then 1987, Steve Vai came out with his um, gem, and then the Super Strat was just everything. Everyone was just super strat. You no longer got interesting shapes or nice guitars. Yeah, argue that if you want. Um, so that was why I wasn't really that keen on the the, Mer the Mer I say Mercury, the, whatever it was, my pal Alan's guitar, which was actually pretty good. It was a super strat though, and I'm not really. They don't have the the appeal to me. Super strats. Kind of. I grew up, I suppose, in the sort of mid '90s, and uh, those sort of guitars. They were still making a lot. When you the guitar shop, there was a lot, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted. SGs and tellies and strats, you know, classic ones for the bands that I liked, because I'm, which I suppose kind of tied in a little bit with like their sort of Stone Roses, a Oasis, a Brit poppy thing where they were all playing more classic guitars. You didn't really see them playing super strats. I think it was basically grunge killed the super strat really, didn't it? Um, you got all the shredders and stuff, and then out came Nirvana with their playing sort of quirky cheap guitars. I think uh, not. I don't. I've never seen them play a Washburn, but I know. Kurt Cobain played um, Aria Pros and Mustangs and stuff like that. So they're buying sort of, you know, not super strats, basically. Um, so that was a, a wee bit of an overview. Half an hour is probably enough for a video. Um, I will probably run through. I did actually do a video of this before when I had, um, when I got the Hawk, this one. That must be, what, a year ago, two years ago? So that's... I'm just going to blank that one because I didn't. I know more now, basically. Um, so as, as a rough guide, yeah, if you can see one of the ones that looks like this, they are stunning. Um, I, the prices, I really don't know what they're going to end up at. Um, I did see the first £1,500 Vulcan on, I don't know, it was Reverb or eBay or something like that. I think they're maybe fishing a little bit there. But if you look at it as... You know, from a purely, if you've got like a, a Martian who doesn't know anything about history and you gave them the Falcon and a two and a half thousand pound Gibson Les Paul, which one's better? A hundred percent of the time they would say the Falcon because it is a better guitar, but it doesn't have the kudos that a Gibson Les Paul does. So, you know, the, the Martian doesn't know about Jimmy Page and Peter Green and Eric Clapton and all that. So he's just looking at it purely as an instrument and it's better wood, better built better features the lot um, but maybe not no it doesn't have the kudos so they're not worth as much money um, basically yet until people until people find out about them I can eventually see these being massive um, some some guitars just the Yamaha SG which is kind of the, was competing with us um, at about the same time it was always really expensive everyone loved it and it, you still don't see it, and it, you know that the SG-1000 and 2000s, which are kind of this sort of spec, you don't see them for under a grand, really. So for some reason, the Yamaha one stayed well-known. And the Washburn was always a bit of an underdog. I think, to be honest, they maybe, they maybe sold them too cheap to start with. 
I mean, this was cheaper than a Les Paul. You know, I mean, they should, it should have been the same price as a Les Paul. And then maybe it would have had that, you know, the Red Bull Hagen dust thing where you're buying the brand. You know, that's very, very much, you know, a can of Red Bull costs about pound ten or something like that. Whereas you can buy the Lidl Red Bull for 20 pence a can. So it doesn't, you know, it's, there's not a pound worth more to make the Red Bull, but it's, a, it's the, the brand loyalty and the designer aspect of it. They should have gone for the designer aspect of it and made it a luxury guitar rather than trying to sell it for the, the practical musician who just wanted the best guitar they could afford, which would always would be this at the in the era. But you know they want they should have appealed more to the luxury market, um, and eventually these will get into the luxury market and they'll be worth lots of money. Um, I think the days are over about picking these up really cheap. But then again, there's still the possibility if you're looking on you know Facebook Marketplace or Gumtree, or someone's got a wash burn, you know they go oh I wonder what this is they look up eBay and there aren't any of this type of wash burn so they just go ah well you know you might you might pick one pick one up for 100 quid or even less than that possibly for someone who doesn't have a no doesn't know what it is but as if you've got like something like a gibson it doesn't really matter who you are if you've got a gibson guitar you go oh, this this must be an expensive one so you're never going to pick up a real gibson for 100 quid um yeah so i think i'm going to do videos of probably i might do one of the bass actually this afternoon this evening just because it's new, the Vulture. Um, and then I'll maybe do wee five minute videos of playing these things. Uh, sound wise and playing wise are fantastic. They really are. But um, the one thing I don't think is that impressive about them is the high fret access, which is maybe not, this, this cutaway, although the idea of having this big scoop in the back is great and it works really well on some BC Riches and some guitars go, oh, super high fret access. It doesn't really give you super high fret access. Although there is no heel, you know, it's like, so I get the hand flat on the back of the guitar there, that's great, but that's, you can't, you know, getting to the last fret is easier than it is in a Les Paul, but not brilliant. Um, saying that, you can play on the 15th, 17th, the 19th, completely unrestricted. So there's just a wee bit of a push to get up to the 22nd fret. You can get to the, the, the 19th un, unhindered completely, and then it's just that wee bit of a, oh, um, yeah, so oh, nearly forty minutes. Rocket. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna put all these lines up. If you look at the look at the Facebook page, the Washburn guitars, the Golden Era, and you do have to answer a question to get in. That question is, this is for eighties guitars. Are you okay with that? Um, and it's amazing the number of people that say yes, and then as soon as you let them in, they immediately just post a picture of a guitar. I bought this guitar brand new last year. And they're like, that's, 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 how's that an eighties one? So they're getting, uh, those posts get, get removed and I feel like a pure Nazi for doing it. But it's like, you know, there is a wash, there's an also a page called the Washburn Guitars Fan Club, which I didn't know about when I started buying. It's for all Washburns, so go there with your other stuff. But um, I'm trying to keep that, this page just to these to try and find out all about them. And things keep, more information keeps coming up. As I said, you know, it's like, the internet's a funny place. Um, maybe 10, 15 years ago, if you didn't, you know, how would you know what these things are? You get an awful lot of people that had these and from you and they bought a hawk or they bought a falcon and it's like it doesn't say falcon on it anywhere there's no catalogs there's no information so how do you know it's a falcon and not a hawk and it's like well now you know that a hawk's three piece neck is the, is, is the, the main difference from looking at it and uh, also something to do with the colors a bit of binding fancy inlays blah, blah, blah. so i'm going to take all these out into the garden and take a photo of them and that will be the new headliner picture for Washburn Guitars, the Golden Era. So hopefully I'll see you there. And um, I never, I, I hate asking for likes and subs and stuff, but if you like and sub, it, it, apparently it boosts my algorithm, which means more people get to see it. Um, I, as far as I'm aware, I don't think anyone has done a 40 minute video talking about Washburn Wings. Um, sites to look up are the Wings, at G3 Wings or whatever it is, even though it hasn't been updated in 15, 20 years, it's still got a lot of things on it. A lot of it's very, a lot of it's very correct, and apart from the thing about Matsumoku, who apparently never made washburns, so you you will see people claiming they've got a washburn. Also, actually, before I end this, American washburns. These are not American. the The brand washburn, the name, is an American one from the forties, but these are not American. They did do a naughty thing at one point in the. 80s in America where they actually had somebody who came round and sanded off 
the serial number and put on another serial number with Made in the USA envelope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there are issues, and I think later on, you know, talking about talking about reissues, I think in the 90s, they, they did do American-made versions of this, but I've never seen any for sale. I have seen them in the catalogue. There's one that's got P90s in it, and it's like, oh, 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 quite fancy. I'd quite fancy that for an American custom shop thing. I think they're... Um, I'm not sure exactly when they were, but you don't see very many of them, and it's not it's not this guitar, nothing to do with this guitar really, apart from it's got the same outline and the same badge on the top. Yeah, so, Wings, my favourite type of guitar, that's why I've got so many of them. Snap them up while you can still pick them up. Um, I mean, you're really talking about so, um, the more expensive Epiphone level, you're talking about to get one of these price-wise, and you're getting a guitar that's better than the more expensive Gibsons, you know, I mean... I keep, I keep uh, slagging off Gibsons. It's only because they're so popular and everyone loves them and they're not worth the amount of money you pay for them. You're two and a half grand. You know, it's like... So, going by that, this should be two and a half... If this was new, it'd be two and a half grand, maybe even more than that. I think there's an element to do with... Uh, the premium woods are running out as well. So, it's like, you know, back... In, in this day, this sort of wood would only be used on custom shop vendors and Gibsons and PRS these days. You wouldn't put these on... You wouldn't put this this grading of wood on production things. I'm still talking about you know guitars that still cost fifteen hundred two thousand pounds. You wouldn't use this this grade of wood on them these days. But I think maybe it's just because back then there was more of it and maybe not as much CITES and not as much environmentalism and all these things. Um, rock on and maybe see you in the next video, which I might. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Um, maybe start with the cheapest one, or do I start with the earliest one, the seventy nine. I'll start with this one because this was the first one we did. Don't know, and then I'll actually make some noise with them. And there'll be less talking, so I'll try and keep the videos down to under 10 minutes. Rock on, catch you later.